الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, I will continue my talk regarding do you believe in Allah's signs? Today is part four. Listen very carefully, please, to the verse I'm going to read now from Surah Al-Zumar, chapter 39, verse 52. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Awalam ya'lamu أن الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يؤمنون. Here Allah سبحانه وتعالى is talking about his bounties, his sustenance, his provisions, which he might give to someone more than the other. It is his choice. He knows. It is better for you not to have that much. Maybe it is a test for those who've been giving more. It is a trial for those who've been giving less. I will explain all this. But the most important thing here that Allah ended this verse by, surely in this are signs for those who believe. He did not say, يَتَفَكَّرُونَ or يَتَذَكَّرُونَ or يَسْمَعُونَ or يَعْقِلُونَ or يُبْصِرُونَ No. يؤمنون. Why? You have no right to question Allah regarding what He has given someone else. If Allah has given someone else more than you, you have no right to question Him. Why? I want a car like Him. I want a house like Him. I want wealth like Him. You have no right. Because if you question Allah, if you compare yourself to others, you lose your faith. Because you have to submit. You have to accept your destiny. You have to accept what Allah has ordained for you. Allah gives you wealth to see how you are going to use it. Are you going to abuse it? Are you going to help the poor and the needy? Are you going to show off? Are you going to be wasteful? And Allah may restrict your means. Why? Again, to test you. How are you going to react? Are you going to deal in fraud? Are you going to be uh, uh, crooked? Are you going to justify the wrong you are going to do to accept bribery and do this and that because you wanted to have more? Let me read the verse again, please. Don't they know? That Allah enlarges the provision or restricts it for any he pleases. It is his choice. Have nothing to do with it. So don't question him. Inna fi dhalika. Surely in this, la ayat. Not only ayah, one single sign. Ayat. So many signs. Liqawmin yu'minun. For those who believe. The footnote. Allah's gifts are given to all people to some and a greater degree than the others. But it is all done according to his wise plan. For his wise will is just and looks to the good of all creatures. No one should therefore be puffed up in prosperity or cast down in adversity. Prosperity does not necessarily mean merit on man's part. It doesn't mean because Allah is giving you something more than the others, you are better than him. You are not. It's a test. Nor adversity, the reverse. Thinking people bear in mind the larger plan which is visible in all Allah's signs. In all Allah's signs. In Surah Ar-Rum, chapter 30, the Romans, very similar verse. Verse 37. أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا Haven't they seen? You see, in this verse, it's, it's uh, the previous verse, verse 52, chapter 39, Allah started it by saying, أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا Don't they know? Aren't they aware? And in verse 37, chapter 30, he is saying, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا 
have been seen and Allah يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlarges the provisions and restricts it to whomsoever he pleases يقصد in Arabic the word uh, that when we refer to carpets we call it bisat bisat and al ard Allah says about the earth in the Quran Allah says wal ard bisatan Allah made the earth so spread out so Allah uses the same word when he gives more provision to someone more than the other. Yafsut means without limit. When Maryam used to receive provisions all the time and Zakaria asked her, where did you get this from? She says, from Allah. He provides to whom he wills without any limits. So it's up to Allah to decide. That's why the verse ends with Inna fi dhalika la ayatin la qawmin yu'minun Again, like the previous one Surely in this are signs for those who believe Allah's great Sorry, Allah's grant Of certain gifts To some as well as his withholding Of certain gifts from others Are themselves signs Ayat Trials or warnings To people of faith and understanding if you have faith, do not question him. Do not, don't you dare. When I was little with my father, would give my brother something which he did not give to me. And I would say to my father, the Arabic word, in, in, in the, the Egyptian slang, Shma'na. Why my brother, why? My father said, don't, never to ask, never to use this word, Shma'na. Nothing to do with you. Don't to compare yourself to the others. You compete with people if, you, if they are doing more charity, if they are doing more forms of worship, they pray more, they fast more, they take uh, care of, of, of the orphans and the needy. Yes, compete with them. But don't be jealous. And don't envy people who've been given more than you. Allah is so fair, He knows why. Some of my servants, if I give them, they will be corrupt. Allah knows that very well. In Surah Al-Shura, chapter 42, in verse 12, لَهُ مَقَالِيدُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, belong the keys of the heavens and the earth. He has full control over heavens and the earth. يَبْسُطُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدَرُ It is him who would give you more than this one, and it is him who would give you less than that one. يَبْسُطُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدَرُ Rizq. A risk, not just limited to money. It could be knowledge. It could be authority. It could be status. So, to him belong the keys of the heavens and the earth. He enlarges and restricts the sustenance to whom he will. Why? إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ because he knows everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala is full will. He, he knows well all things. 4540. Sustenance here, as elsewhere, stands for all things that, that support every phase of life. Physical, social, intellectual, or spiritual. The source of all gifts is Allah. His bounty is inexhaustible. And he gives to all. But he does not give to all in the same measure. Because out of the fullness of his knowledge and wisdom, he can judge best what is best for any of his creatures. Just as simple as that. He knows what you are going to use your wealth for. It might cause you destruction. He doesn't want to give it to you. And in Surah Saba, chapter 34, Sheba, verse 36. Allah is saying to Muhammad, قُلْ Say, إِنَّ Rabbi, my Lord, يَقْصُطُ الرِّزْقَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرُ He enlarges and restricts the provision to whom he pleases. But the majority of the people are not aware of that. Because if you are aware of that, if you have faith, 
you will accept, you will be content, you will be satisfied, you will not ask him why. And in Surah Al-Ankabut, the spider, chapter 29, verse 62. Allahu al liman yasha'u min ibadihi wa yaqdiru lah. Inna Allah bi kulli shayin ali. Verse 62, chapter 29. Again, the same meaning. Allah is the one who would give someone more than the other. Inna Allah bi kulli shayin alim. Because Allah is aware of everything. It is because of his knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah at taghabun chapter 64, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is confirming to us that our wealth, our money, and our children are both trials to us, a test. Alas, finished. Your children, your wealth are both a test from Allah, a trial. Allah knows how to try each one of us and we have been told in the Quran, we are all going to be tested, whether you like it or you don't like it. So we are all going to be tested. You cannot get away from it. We are here in this life to be tested. So we must all make an effort to pass the test, please, by being so patient and content and to accept whatever Allah has given you. Your riches, your wealth, and your children may be but a trial. Wallahu indahu ajrun azim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the highest reward. And in Surah Al-Kahf, chapter 18, verse 46, المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا wealth and sons are the allurements of this life but what would last والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا let me, let me read a footnote Surah Al-Kahf, the cave, chapter 18, verse 46. Wealth and sons are attractions or allurements of the life of this world. People like to have more boys, more sons. They like to have more wealth. And Allah is saying, وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا But good deeds are best in the sight of your Lord as rewards and best as the foundation for hopes. Other things are fleeting, but good deeds have a lasting value in the sight of Allah. They are best as or for rewards in two ways. They flow from us by the grace of Allah and are themselves rewards for our faith. Two, they become the foundation of our hopes for the highest rewards in the hereafter. In Surah Al-Fajr, the Dawn, chapter 89, listen very carefully, please. Very important. Starting from verse 15, chapter 89, Al-Fajr, the Dawn. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَا بَتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَامَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَكْرَمَنِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests 
man by giving him honor and gifts. How does he react? How does he respond? He becomes so puffed up. And he would say, Rabbi Akraman, my Lord has honored me. Look what my Lord has done for me. He has honored me. He doesn't know it is a test, it's a trial. As for man, when his Lord tests him, tries him, giving him honor and gifts, he says, puffed up, my Lord has especially honored me. I deserve it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the same two words, ibtila. Whether he gives you or he doesn't give you. So both are tests from Allah. The first one, when he was given wealth and gifts and honor, he was so puffed up. And instead of saying thank you to Allah, and instead of recognizing the rights of the poor and the needy in whatever Allah has given him, he became so arrogant, so puffed up. Oh, Allah, I've been given this because uh, of my knowledge or my, my, uh, my cleverness, as we will hear later. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restricts his subsistence as a test, as a trial, what would he say? In despair, my Lord has humiliated me. My Lord has humiliated. Look what he has done to me. <coughs> the Lord of mercy and the Lord of compassion. Look what he has done to me. He humiliated me. He took everything from me. The first one was a test and the second one is a test. And then Allah says in verse 17, Kalla. No, you don't honor the orphans. You don't look after the orphans. I give you this or I took this from you because you did not honor the orphans. And you don't encourage each other to feed the poor and the needy. You forgot about them. The unbeliever would say to the believer, why should we feed someone Allah should have fed? Nothing to do with me. He created him. Let him feed him. And you devour inheritance with all greed. The amount of fighting going on between families fighting for inheritance is beyond the imagination. Especially when someone takes something which is not his. It is not his part of the inheritance, but he takes it. Oh, I am the one who supported my father in the business all the time. None of my brothers or sisters work there. I have the right to take it. No, you don't have the right to take everything. It's not yours. And you devour inheritance with all greed. And you love and you adore wealth, money with inordinate love. No way you can translate this. Arabic words into English. No way. You love money, you love it. You see, if I go out now and I find a ticket, parking ticket on my car, I would be so upset. I would be upset. If I find five pence on the floor, I would be so delighted to pick it up. Yes, so delighted. Can you imagine? Don't tell me you are not. You are, everyone does this. Or when I, or, or when, when, when you receive a check in the post from the Inland Revenue for 199, can you imagine? 199 refund from the Inland Revenue. You, 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 you rejoice that you have some money. We all love money. Who doesn't love money? And Allah is telling us, I give someone money and gifts and honor to test him. And he becomes so arrogant. I restrict it to someone else. 
and he is in despair. He suffers from de uh, depression and, and, and nervous breakdown. He might go on drugs or alcohol or whatever, or even commit suicide because Allah has taken everything from him. And then Allah says, but think about it. You never honor the orphans. You never encourage each other to feed the poor and the needy. There are many children in this country who go to school in the morning without breakfast. They, can, they rely entirely on the breakfast at school. How many of us are helping? It doesn't matter whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never said, oh, only give the, the Muslim, don't give the non-Muslim. No. Allah gives us all oxygen to breathe, water to drink, whether you believe in him or you don't believe in him. How many are really active in doing all this? Look at the camps in Syria, in Yemen, in Iraq, in Libya. People are dying in the cold. How many thought of doing something to support them and help them? And here we are enjoying the luxury of, the, of, of whatever luxury you are enjoying in this part of the world. So remember, as for man, when his Lord tries him, giving him honor and gifts, then he says, puffed up. My Lord has especially honored me, but when he tries him, restricting his subsistence, for him, then he says in despair, my Lord has humiliated me. Now I'm going to go to Surah Al-Qasas, chapter 28. A beautiful story, true story, in chapter 28, Surah Al-Qasas, the narration. We know that Bani Israel lived in Egypt for almost 600 years from the time of Yusuf, alayhi salatu wassalam, until the time of Musa, alayhi salatu wassalam. There was a man from the people of Musa, from Bani Israel. His name was Qarun. Qarun. If you go to Egypt, 80 miles to the southwest of Cairo, we have a lake. A salty lake in the middle of the desert. Known as Buhayrat Qarun, the lake of Qarun. And Allah tells us the story in Surah Al-Qasas, the narration, chapter 28, starting from verse 76. Inna Qaruna kana min qawmi Musa fabaga alayh. Qarun was from the people of Musa, but he rebelled and transgressed against them. وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ We have given him so many treasures. ما إن مفاتحه لتنوء بالعصبة أولي القوة. His treasures had so many keys, and the keys were so heavy to be carried by a gang of strong men. سبحان الله. Look how Allah is describing the extent of the wealth of this man. He had so many treasures. And the keys to his treasures were so heavy, so heavy that a group or a gang of strong men cannot carry it, would find it extremely difficult to carry them. Becomes a burden for a group or a gang of strong men just to carry the keys. So if the keys are so much can you imagine what is in his treasures? إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ His people said to him, don't exult. Because Allah does not like those who exult in riches. The word farah, يَفْرَحْ To rejoice, to be happy. But الفرح الذي يذهب الشكر Al-Farah, al-ladhi yudhib al-shukr. To be so happy to the extent you do not say thank you to Allah. You do not acknowledge that what Allah has given you is from Him. Allah is not asking us to be miserable and depressed and not to be happy. No. 
لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفرحين الله does not love those who become overwhelmed with joy and happiness to ignore or to deny giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's known in Arabic we call al-farah al-ladhi yudhib al-shukr so the righteous people in his family or surroundings are advising him. Number one, لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفرحين. Don't exalt for Allah does not love those who exalt in riches. What's the meaning of the word exalt? E-X-U-L-T. The, uh, uh, the explanation is show or feel triumphant, elation or jubilation. So that was number one. Number two, وَبْتَغِ فِيمَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ And seek in the wealth which Allah has given you the hereafter. Allah gave you wealth. Invest it for the next life. Don't only use it in this life or hoard it in this life and deny the rights of the poor and the needy. وَبْتَغِ فِيمَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ Seek with the wealth which Allah has bestowed on you the home of the hereafter. Invest for the next life. Help those who are in need. Support good causes. There are people who are poor. They are orphans. They are widows. People who cannot afford even to be treated from a disease or illness. Use your wealth to help these people. That's number two. Number three, Don't forget your share in this life. Enjoy your money. Enjoy your wealth. You have wealth. The Prophet ﷺ said, eat whatever you want to eat and wear whatever you want to wear as long as there is no waste and there is no showing off. Just as simple as that. You are a rich man, enjoy it. Because whatever you are going to use, you are generating employment and helping others. Don't have all this wealth being hoarded and you live in an awful standard of living, you and your family. ولا تنسى نصيبك من الدنيا وأحسن كما أحسن الله إليك and be good as Allah been good to you ولا تبغي الفساد في الأرض don't spread mischief in the earth don't use your wealth to corrupt people don't use your wealth to bribe people to take something which is not yours إن الله لا يحب المفسدين Allah does not love those who spread mischief in the land let me read the advice given to him by his people. Do not exalt, for Allah does not love those who exalt in riches. But seek with the wealth which Allah has bestowed on you, the home of the hereafter. Don't forget your portion in this world. Do good as Allah has been good to you. Do not seek occasions for mischief in the land, for Allah does not love those who do mischief. The footnote 3407 in the translation of Abdullah Yusuf Ali. That's it. That is, spend your wealth in charity and good works. It is Allah who has given it to you, and you should spend it in Allah's cause. Nor should you forget the legitimate needs of this life as misers do, and most people become misers who think too exclusively of their wealth. If wealth is not used properly, there are three evils that follow. One, its possessor may be a miser and forget all claims due to himself and those about him. Two, he may forget the higher needs of the poor and the needy, or the good causes which require support. And three, he may even misspend on occasions and cause a great deal of harm and mischief. Apparently, Karun, his name was Karun, Karun, Karun had all three vices. In the next verse, 78, chapter 28, what was the response of Karun? A man who had so much to the extent that the keys to his treasures 
would be a burden on a group or a gang of very strong men to carry. What did he say? This wealth is because of my knowledge, because of my cleverness. I know how to make money. Don't bring God into it, please. I am clever enough. I know how to deal in the money market. I know how to deal in the exchange. I know what I'm doing. This has been given to me because of a certain knowledge which I have. Oh dear. And then Allah says to him, أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَهْلَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنَ الْقُرُوِ مَنْ هُوَ أَشَدُ مِنُّ قُوَّةِ وَأَكْثُرُ جَمْعًا is, is he not aware that Allah has destroyed so many generations before him? People who were much stronger than him. People who were more rich than him. وَلَا يُسْأَلُ عَنْ ذُنُوبِهِمُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ The criminals are not going to be called to account immediately. Allah would give them respite to see how they will behave, how they will conduct themselves, and then he will punish them. He was so blind and arrogant that he thought that his own merit, knowledge, and skill, or cleverness, and had earned him his wealth. And that now, on account of it, he was superior to everybody else and was entitled to ride rough shod over them. Fool! He was soon pulled up by Allah. Oh, one day, he went out parading in the streets of Egypt with all his wealth and the glitter. And people were standing there watching. So those who do not believe in the hereafter, they said, we wish if we would have been given what Karun has been given. So when we started today, we were saying, Allah gives and restricts. Allah gives so much to someone and restricts to another one. And this is, the, in, in, in this there are signs. In this are signs to those who believe. So these people were only interested in this life. So what they said, We wish if we would have been given like Karun, surely he is so lucky. Those who wanted this life. Those who were only interested in this life. Oh, we had the like of what Karun has got. For he is truly a lord of mighty good fortune. Oh, with that we had the like of what Karun is given. Most surely he is possessed of mighty good fortune. And then the people who've been given knowledge, the true believers said, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ People who've been granted true knowledge about the hereafter, they said, وَإِلَكُمْ ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لِمَنْ آمَنُ وَعَمِنَ صَالِحٌ The reward of Allah in the hereafter is best for those who believe and work righteousness. وَلَا يُلَقَّاهَ إِلَّا الصَّابِرُونَ but you have to be patient. You have to persevere patiently. So don't look at what other people has and wish to have the same. Think of the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the earth and Karun and his house and his palaces and his wealth and all his treasures disappeared. And now we have a lake in the southwest of Cairo, or Giza, known as Buhayrat Qarun, and underneath you have the wealth of this man. So, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ Then we caused the earth to swallow up him and his house. فَمَا كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ فِئَةٍ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُنْتَصِرِينَ And he had not the least little party to help him against Allah, nor could he defend himself. So those who wished the day before 
that they would have been given what he has been given, what they said. وأصبح الذين تمنوا مكانه بالأمس يقولون ويكأن الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء من عباده ويقدر لو لأمن الله علينا لخسف بنا ويكأنه لا يفلح الكافرون and those who had envied his position the day before began to say on the morrow ah it is indeed Allah who enlarges the provision or restricts it to any of his servants he pleases. Had it not been that Allah was gracious to us, he could have caused the earth to swallow us up. Ah, uh, those who reject Allah will assuredly never prosper. And I'm going to stop here. But the talk be recorded, please, when you go home, when you receive it from the WhatsApp group, listen to it. Sit with your family. Reflect on it. Please, make an effort. <coughs> Once a week to sit with your family. Once a week. And open the Quran and study it. Please. This life is very short. Alhamdulillah, now I'm 77 years old. My birthday was on Monday. So I became 77. So Allah made me live until I'm 77 now. So please, we don't know when we are going to be departing. Make an effort, please. My dear brother, shukran.